personal finance practice problem using OneNote. Recovery period for maintenance to reduce insurance premium. Prepare to get financially fit by practicing personal finance. You're not required to, but if have access to OneNote, would like to follow along. We're in the icon left-hand side, practice problem tab in the 8110 recovery period for maintenance to reduce insurance premium tab. Also take a look at the immersive reader tool. Our practice problems usually in the text area too with the same name, same number, but with transcripts. Transcripts that can be translated into multiple different languages and either listened to or read in them. Information's on the left-hand side. We are imagining a situation where we have a current premium on our homeowner's insurance policy of $500 and the homeowner's insurance company is saying, look, if you just install these couple items, do a little bit of maintenance, which will cost you up front a bit, we can lower or give a discount on your homeowner's insurance uh, premium. So what we'll do is we'll calculate what the discount will be and we'll calculate a type of calculation which is quite common anytime you have a scenario like this, a scenario being where you're gonna be putting money out up front in order to get savings or a benefit future cash flows in the future. And you might say, well, how long, how long? will it take before I recover the money that I had to put down up front? And then you can go further than that and take into consideration time value of money kind of calculations. We won't go to there now, but that's where we'll, that's be the calculation. So the homeowner's insurance company is saying, hey, look, if you put deadbolts on your home, then we're less likely to have to pay out because it's less likely that you're going to be robbed and we'll be able to lower your premiums by uh, 4%, but it's gonna cost you like $175 to install the deadbolts. Again, we probably would be thinking, deadbolts might be a good idea you know, <laughs> you know, just anyways i kind of want the deadbolts and i don't know where you where you know where you live right now you might want the dead but in any case then the second one says we have the discount uh, to install a smoke detector so once again the insurance company saying you know if you had a smoke detector then uh we are less likely that we have to pay out in the event of a fire and so that would be good for us and we're like what those squeaky things that you know every time i cook it yells at me the smoke detector but no so if we install that it's going to be the three percent and the cost will be 48 so again both of these items we probably would be saying it's probably a safety issue more than more than an issue just to lower the homeowner's insurance as well you might be thinking but uh we're going to do it just from a cost perspective here and say okay well when's it how much I'm not doing it unless, <laughs> unless it saves me some money on my homeowner's insurance. So we're gonna do the calculation on how much uh, the it's gonna save us. So the first one, we got the discount on the deadbolt locks. So we're gonna say the original premium is 500. We got a 4% discount. So that means we're gonna get $20 on the discount. So we could say 500 times 0.04, which of course would be the 20. If we look at the discount for the smoke detectors, if we put that in place, we've got the 500 times the 3%, which would give us the 15, which of course would be the 500 times the 0.03. These again, great tools. These quick little calculations even are great to do in Excel. Just setting up your little table here, just to visualize your, your tables, working on putting the underlines, making a percent type of cell. Uh, you can get to be able to do these quite quickly, even though you can visualize them in your head but that those are kind of the best ones to do in Excel at first, at least because that allows you to kind of visualize what's in your head on a table format. So then we could say that the total discount would be the 20 plus the 15 or the 35 if we did both of them. But wait, we had to put down $175 for those dead volts and $48 for the for this one. So so let's take that into consideration so we got the recovery period when am i going to get paid back for those dead volts well if i did the dead volts i got 175 that i got to put down up front to buy those dang dead volts and then i'm going to say that that's divided by 20 dollars on the discount so 175 we got to do to install it divided by 20 dollars savings it's going to take us 8.75 recovery period on dead volts so 8.75 if that's our yearly you know, savings. So it could take us some time just with regards to the discount on them to recover. It's like that. It takes eight years to recover my 175. I'm not doing it. I'm sleeping. I don't even need a door. Doors. I'll just put a towel up on the thing. <laughs> 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 but anyway, so we got the next one. 
So the next one is the cost to, to uh, the smoke detector. $48 for those squeaky things that yell at me every time I cook a decent meal. So we got 48 divided by 15 is going to be 3.2 for the recovery period. 3.2 uh, years to recover that one. So, so then, so that's a typical kind of calculation. Again, anytime if you're looking just from a financial perspective to try to say, okay, if I have to put money down up front, how long, and you're gonna say that there's savings or I'm gonna have a future cash inflow, how long will it take for that future cash inflow to account for or recoup me at least for the dollar amount up front? Now note that of course that doesn't take into consideration the time value of money. So if you're talking about a long ways out, eight years starts to get kind of a long ways out, you could consider the fact that there's you know, a decline in the value of money uh, in the future and so on with inflation and whatnot, but we won't dive into that here. So we could also do kind of a combined recovery period. You could say, if I tried to combine these together, so if I took the, the savings we had or the cost of both of them, which was the 175, 175 plus the 48 that's going to give us the 233 and then we've got the discount of the 35 for both of them which is the which is the 20 plus the 15 that gives us our 35 so if i take then the 223 divided by 35 then we've got this uh 6.4 about in years for for the combination between the two of them. But of course, if I look up top, this first one took the longer point to recover it, 8.8. .8. It also costs more, 170, 175, which is part of the reason. And then we've got the cost to, to do it is only 48. And so we've got a recovery period of 3.2. If we tried to combine them. That's it! Boobies combined! Together, then, then we've got we've got the 6.4 and also just note with these calculations if we're talking in years here then that 0.4 is going to be a fraction of a year so you can say okay well if there's 12 months times 0.4 it's going to be six years and you know four to five months or something like that so that's a typical kind of back of the envelope as they would say type of calculation if you're just looking at the money that would be returned and if you're talking about bigger dollar amounts then you're gonna might do other uh, calculations to take into consideration the time value of money as you're receiving those future cash flows in the future